Hello and welcome to NAB 2024. My name's Simon from Blackmagic Design and today I'm going to take you through what is new in DaVinci Resolve 19. So in DaVinci Resolve 19, it's, it's a huge update. There's so many different facets of it. Obviously, we've got some very nice new cool color page updates because we know all our colorists out there love what we do. Um, we've got a lot of development around uh, Fairlight though, around some of the audio tools. We've got some new AI tools for audio. Obviously, we've made tweaks in the edit page. We've taken customer feedback and built those into the edit page. Same with Fusion. We've got a very clever AI tracker in Fusion. And then on top of that, we've got a replay system. So um, DaVinci Resolve now integrates with our Hyperdex and cameras, so you can actually do replays in DaVinci Resolve and play them back out live to air. Um, which is a huge development because it merges lots of different products. So DaVinci Resolve isn't even becoming something about post-production now, it's finding its way into the production market as well. So one of the first ones is we have a new tool called Color Slice. So again, if I just open up the Color Slice tab, you can see this is basically, you're able to work with all slices of your color within one color environment. So it's not like a, a qualifier where you suddenly work on one color because obviously the colors flow into each other. So it's a way of being able to grade reds, yellows, greens, and skin tone um, accurately to be able to really be precise with those areas of color. Um, without kind of introducing things like noise to the image. So again, what I can do is if I just add a serial node to this shot, again, if I take a look at the controls in here, I have density sliders, I have saturation sliders, I have a hue slider as well. So again, if I work on the skin tone in here, if you can see if I drag this up and down, I can simply change the density of the skin tone or maybe even change the saturation of it. So if I uh, sort of drop the density down a little bit and drop the saturation down a little bit, you can see I can easily adjust the skin tone without affecting the rest of the image. Again, if I click on the hue slider, I can obviously start to just change the hue of the skin tone. So if I want my, my subject to be a little more pinky, I can do that. I can change the center. And again, we've got a little highlight button as well here. So if you click on that, I can see the areas of the image I'm affecting. Um, but it works a little bit like the HDR tools. You're not solely simply picking one thing and ignoring the rest, because they all work together. You get very even color across the image when you adjust one element to it. So this is the, this is the color slice new tool great for doing skin tone, great for sort of really pushing the densities of certain colors. So for example, again, if I uh, take a look at this shot here with the blue, oh, let me get it where there's a blue. I can see the blues in here. As you can see, I can really start to sort of tweak the density in that and it doesn't affect the rest of the image. So, so this is feature number one that's got really got people talking. So we have um, something called the Film Look Creator. Now, this isn't designed, you know, I think there's been a little bit of chat about there are certain other applications and plugins that emulate film looks, but they emulate specific film stocks, and that's not what we're doing. It's sort of our, it's Blackmagic's take on a film look. But it, you can get some very, very cool looking filmic results really quickly. So again, if I just add a note to this, and, and it's an effect. So again, if I just go and search for this uh, would help if I search for the right thing there we go so I've got the film look creator so if I drag that on there you can immediately see it defaults to 65 mil but I have a huge amount in controls in here so you know I know a lot of colorists like to work with halation and bloom um, I quite like the split tone so the split tone you can do some kind of really sort of cruel cool cross processing with this um, quite easily, as you say, the halation and bloom. Let's see if I can get a little bloom in this shot. There we go. 
So it is a way, it's just a really cool way of creating filmic looks really quickly to get some really interesting film looks. And you say there's a huge amount of parameters that we could spend all day going through. Um, but again, it's something that colorists like, and I'm sure we're gonna see lots of sort of creative new grades coming through using this application. So defocus is really cool because for, it, it answered an a, a issue for me because when we did things like the object mask or the depth map, people always wanted to sort of cheat that depth of field. But one of the, the sort of issues you had, you used to end up with this kind of soft edging. So you used to have to co constantly try and tweak it to make it look right. But we've now got a defocus and, and you can use, you can use sort of the, the character uh, selection rather um, with a, tool and then apply that to the defocus. So what I'm going to do is let me just add a corrector node in here. So I'm just going to add a corrector node. Uh, and what I'm going to do on this corrector node, I am, I'm actually going to use the magic mask on this. So let me just go and find the magic mask. Uh, I'm just going to turn on my overlay so I can actually see it. There we go. Uh, make that better. And again, I'm just going to uh, select my characters. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of pipe this in to a defocus. So again, what I can actually do is add a serial node in here. Oops, I don't want that. Uh, wait. Sorry about that. My uh, nodes seem to have selected different things. There we go. So what I can do is I can pipe my selection into here and then under my effects, I have my new defocus background option. So I can pipe that into there. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I am actually just gonna have to track my object mask. So obviously what I'm doing here is doing the object mass to get the mat and then piping that in to the defocus background. And now when I go into the defocus background, you can see I can sort of adjust the background and the characters themselves sort of stay in focus and you, and the, you don't get a lot of fringing around the edges. So, you know, you can blur it, you can adjust the saturation, I can, I can colorize it. So again, if I want to make the background a little cooler I can do that make the foreground stand out more and for me that was really cool because again for, you know using the object mask was great but it's now using an object mask with a specific tool for defocus so again you can get a very cool depth of field look even if you've not shot it that way but one I think that is massively massively um, time saving um, is something called the audio ducker yeah on the ducker I will say the source track is the condenser track in here. And I will just simply up the duct level so we can see. And again, if I open up the interface, you can actually see this. So now when I play this back, you can see it, it plays along. But then as soon as it hits the other track, you can see it actually ducking the level. And again, when we, when we lose that track, same again here, it'll duck the level and then when it comes back out, it fades it back down again. So, um, you know, audio guys have something called side chaining. We've still got side chaining and we've made improvements to that as well. But I think certainly for editors with this, you don't have to start keyframing your audio, especially when you've got a long track like this. As you can see, I could just leave it playing and it's automatically ducking the music so I can hear the dialogue track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo the IntelliTracker. So it's an AI tracker tool. Um, you can use it in the color page. You can use it in Fusion as well. Um, and again, it's just using AI to get more accurate track points. Um, so, you know, if, for example, on this, what I really want to do is I maybe want to add a lens flare. I want a little flare to come off these lights. So, again, I can... I'll quickly go and apply a lens flare up here. And I'll just do like a, a kind of, uh, maybe do a modern sci-fi one. So what I'm gonna do is just do sort of a little lens flare up here, but obviously all of this is going to move. So 
you know, when I obviously when I play this back, it, it's going all over the place, and you'd expect the flare to move with the shot. So what I'm actually going to do is maybe I'll get it on a frame where I can see an area that I'm going to track. Um, and yeah, I can do an effects track. Instead of doing a point tracker, I've got something called IntelliTrack. And then with an IntelliTrack, what I can simply do, I should be able to go and click a point. Come on. I should be able to go and click a point. <laughs> oh, it's there. It is there. It did. Sorry, it did apply. I'm not looking in the right place. So, as you can see, there I've got an I've got a track point. So now, when I track this, it will track as much as it can. Let me track that backwards as well. So as you can see, it's kind of done, and it, it does a really good job of tracking that point. There's a lot of movement on there. And as you can see, it's immediately attached my effect to it. So again, I can just maybe just shuffle this. So if I turn that off, now you can see that lens flare moves along. So the IntelliTracker is great because it's using AI for a track point. So you can see with that, even there's a lot of movement and the track point disappears off screen, the IntelliTrack's still been able to follow the point. So it's hugely powerful, and again, it's using Resolve's neural engine to do this. Do I have a hidden gem? There is a hidden gem that it's a, it's a little difficult to show you, but for me, it's really, really useful. So hidden away in the release notes, we've got something called the DaVinci Resolve OpenFX Renderer. So if you are using third-party compositing systems, something like Nuke, the common workflow has been is if you do a grade, you take a lookup table, or people use CDLs. Now, the problem with the CDL, it only does sort of your lift, gamma, and gain controls. It can't do anything complicated. Same with the lookup table. Lookup tables can't take masks or tracks. But what we've got the ability to do now is certain applications can accept an open effects renderer. So what you can do is take a still in resolve of your grade, export that as a DPX file, and then people can drop it into something like Nuke, and your whole grade is applied as a look. So they don't have access to the grade, but you can actually start to hand off grades to your compositing systems with everything. So all your windows and your tracking and everything within one node that can then be applied to your compositing system. And for me, that's a little thing, but it's massively time-saving. And again, it allows people to take grades from Resolve into compositing applications. Most of the new features are available um, in DaVinci Resolve. However, you do need the studio version for the neural engine features, all the AI, because it is a studio-only version um, for those. Um, the DaVinci Resolve 19 um, is on our website now. It is a public beta, so we always advise not switching mid-project if you're using an earlier version of Resolve. But 19 is available as a public beta to download from our website now.